Tonight, Trump telling reporters he doesn't regret choosing J.D. Vance as his running mate now that Harris is now at the top of the Democratic ticket. I do the same pick. He's doing really well. He's, he's really caught, caught on. Comes as our K-File uncovers Vance's own words supporting a woman who accused Trump of sexual misconduct. At a fundamental level, this is sort of a he said, she said, right? And at the end of the day, do you believe Donald Trump, who always tells the truth? Just kidding. Or do you believe that woman on that tape? No. K-Files' Andrew Kaczynski is out front now. I mean, Andrew, this is a, this is a front and center topic for Trump when you talk about um, the, the Stormy Daniels case, the 34 convictions, uh, E. Jean Carroll, the entire uh, pantheon of uh, issues uh, that have come up on this. What more did you find on this from J.D. Vance? Yeah, and look, we already knew that J.D. Vance was a Donald Trump hater in 2016, but this really takes it to a whole nother level, repeatedly saying, implying that he thought Donald Trump was a sexual, a repeated sexual predator. And I think it's important to remember the context of when this was happening, right? It was just after uh, that Access Hollywood tape came out. It was after all of these women came out following that tape. Uh, accusing Trump of of sexual assault, and that's when uh, Vance. Take a look right here of what he wrote on Twitter during that time. He wrote, "What percent of the American population has uh, tagging him at real Donald Trump sexually assaulted?" And that real it isn't all of it. Uh, he also liked two tweets implying that Trump committed sexual assault, including one that said, "Quote: uh, Trump was a thug, real estate baron who commits serial sexual." assault. And he also liked this other tweet in 2016 uh, where he said, I wish there was a second uh, vice presidential debate just to see uh, Mike Pence deny Trump saying that he grabbed pussy. Uh, and this is all very ironic, right? Because mm -hmm. now Vance is the one who has to defend those very comments from Trump as the VP pick. <laughs> so, right. so that was then. Uh, this is, this is uh, a now. And take a listen after you heard that first clip to how uh, Vance is defending Trump. Okay. I think fundamentally the lawsuit is about something that happened 25 years ago. It's a he said, she said situation. And I trust my friend and the guy that I've known and gotten to know. Um, so obviously, you know, it's, it's, he's just saying, well, I got to know him better. So now I don't think he did those things. And, you know, and he yeah. used the same yeah. language there too. He's like, it's a he said, she said, but now I believe uh, Donald Trump. And I believe the he. All right, now you also found a flip-flop on another major issue, which is obviously now at the center of this entire race, would have been anyway, but it certainly is uh, the way the Vice President Harris is putting it. Uh, that is, of course, abortion. And Vance had a very different view on that not long ago. That's right, and, and abortion has become such a huge losing issue for Republicans every time that abortion has been on the ballot over the last couple of years. Republicans have lost, and now Vance is taking Donald Trump's line, which is that uh, it's a state issue. The issue has been returned to the state. It's not a federal issue, but that's not what he was saying a couple of years ago. Take a listen to this. I certainly would like abortion to be legal nationally. Let's say Roe versus Wade is overruled. Ohio, Ohio bans abortion, um, you know, in 2022, or 2000, let's say 2024. And then, you know, every day, George Soros sends a 747 to Columbus mm -hmm. That's to right. load up yeah. disproportionately black women to get them to go have abortions in California. And of course, the left will celebrate this as a victory yes. for diversity. Uh, that's kind of creepy. Hell's if that happens, do you need some federal response to prevent it from happening? Because it's really creepy. And I think what's interesting about that clip is he says the reason he wants a national abortion ban is because he doesn't think women should be allowed to travel between states for abortions. So obviously it's not a state issue. And how he was saying it then, that was obviously before the Dobbs decision changed the whole calculus for the politics around abortion for Republicans. But that is probably the strongest anti-abortion language that we've seen from him. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew Kaczynski with K-File. So uh, Harry Anton joins me now to go beyond the numbers. And Harry, I mean, this is the, the thing, you know, you know Trump, Trump, of course, is going to say what Trump is going to say. He doesn't yeah. have a choice. He, wh whatever he really thinks, he's got to stick by uh, staying with his man now. Sure. Uh, but um, Danny Freeman asked voters, he was just on in yes, Pennsylvania, at what they think of J.D. Vance. And here's what they said. What do you think about Vance? Well, I, he wrote Hillbilly Elegy, and I'm kind of a redneck, so I kind of like him. Do you think now knowing that 
Kamala Harris is going to be likely the Democratic nominee. Do you think J.D. Vance makes the most sense? I mean, to run with Trump? Yeah. Well, it's a little late now, isn't it? How do you feel about uh, Trump's VP pick, J.D. Vance? He's kind of like uh, a little loud and obnoxious. You see him settle down a little bit. All right, you've been looking at the numbers. Yeah. And, you know, Kristen Soltis Anderson pollster told me recently, you know, you need a day or two to see things settle but you often can see things pretty quickly. What do you see right now? Uh, frankly, I don't really understand the pick, and apparently neither do the American voters, because uh, we take a look at the net favorable rating uh, for a J.D. Vance. That's a favorable minus unfavorable. It's a negative net territory. Look at that, negative six points. I will tell you, Aaron, I have gone all the way back since 1980. He is the first guy, after immediately following a convention, a VP pick, who actually had a net negative favorable rating. That is underwater. The average mm. since 2000 is plus 19 points. J.D. Vance making history in the completely wrong way. I mean, it's amazing. Plus 19. And I know people talk VPs don't usually matter, but they're usually, usually they're not pretty a negative. Popular. Usually they're yes. popular. In this case, he's dragging Trump down. All right. And then there's also Ohio, which I, you know, have been around long enough to have been there on an election night. And the reason I was there, because the person who wins Ohio wins the White House. Right. Uh, Ohio's a red state now. Yeah. Uh, so, so what does the J.D. Vance pick do for Trump? Obviously, he is a senator from Ohio. There's this whole idea, oh, J.D. Vance is, you know, going to help out in Ohio, perhaps, perhaps help out in those Rust Belt, those Great Lake battleground states. But if you look at Ohio, if you look, yeah, J.D. Vance won in 2022, but he only won by six points. That's worse than Donald Trump did in 2020. It's far worse than Mike DeWine wow. did in 2022. He is the, was the worst performing Republican candidate in 2022 up and down the ballot in the state of Ohio. He has nothing there. All right, so Trump does very well with white working class voters. That's yeah. one of his superpowers. So what does Vance add? Yeah, what, what, what does Vance add? Look, he won white working class voters. He won white voters without a college degree in the state of Ohio. But pretty much every Republican wins white working class voters. And if you look here, again, the margin that Vance put up was the weakest performance of any major Republican. It's worse than Trump did in Ohio. It's worse than Mike DeWine did in Ohio. The J.D. Vance pick makes no sense from a statistical polling perspective, Aaron. All right. Thank you very much. Thank and you. we're going to watch all these polls start to come in the next days.